it's almost a year that I'm publishing courses on Udemy. And since then, I noticed there is a big change in my YouTube channel. Most of the videos that I publish are answers to the questions from my students or support of my courses that I published there. Sometimes I missed something there in the course and I packaged it in a YouTube video and I communicated that missing element to my students. And most of the time when they ask me questions, if I think it's worth sharing with the other people, I create a video and put it on YouTube so everybody will enjoy and get benefit out of it. Today's video is one of those videos again. There's a question regarding file updates on SharePoint. So if something is changing, if a file property is changing, we want to track it and we want to fire a flow. And there are different ways to do that. I have a chapter in that course, but when I look back into that chapter in the Microsoft Flow Crash Course, I think this is a valid point. I really didn't dig into that concept as much as I wanted to. And anyway, that was a beginner course. So I was not really expecting this level of questions from my students. Regardless, we are getting deep into it. So if you want to see different ways, that we can monitor file updates inside Microsoft Power Automate or Flow. Let's see how it works. If we check the lists of the triggers that they actually monitor SharePoint lists or libraries, we will find three triggers. One of them is when the item is created or modified, which is related to items, not document libraries. The other one is when a file is created or modified, which is specifically looking into libraries, and when the file is created or modified in a folder. So basically, there are three different triggers that they can monitor and they will fire when item is updated or created inside the SharePoint library. Although the first one says item is created, and it clearly refers to list item. Knowing that SharePoint library is also a kind of list, we can actually use this one too to monitor a library. All these three work perfectly fine. I start from the third one, when the file is created or modified in a folder. Let's see what it has and how it performs. Inside SharePoint, I created a library called lib01. I also added a column called category. So when I upload a file, actually I can also set the category for it. For example, training, business, marketing, or whatever you want. And it's plain text. I already created two dummy files, test01 and test02. I just drag and drop them into this folder. And I also assigned the category for it. So if I select this one, I can click on edit. And I will set the category to marketing and click save. And the other one I selected and I set the category to training and I click save. So now we want to use every single one of those triggers and monitor these items in this library and see how they work. I go back to flow.microsoft.com I click on create and I want to create an instant flow. I click on skip. I create everything from scratch and I use SharePoint. And when I click on SharePoint, I would say modified when the file is created or modified in a folder. So I select this one. I go to the SharePoint site that I have. If you have the URL in the list, so basically if you have already used it, you can pick that up just like me. Otherwise, click on enter custom value, and then you can just copy and paste the URL of this site here. Paste. And when I enter the URL, I can click on this folder and I can pick the list or library that I want to use, which is lib01. If you want to monitor a subfolder, you can 
take it a little bit further and if there is anything you can use it at the moment there is just built-in forms folder which i don't want to work with it at the moment i'm happy with lib01 so i created a trigger that is watching a library and let me just change the name and i give it a name as sp library watch and i really don't want to do anything after that i just want to add a new step and put the output of this trigger inside this compose so compose i click on compose i just get the entire output i can of course i can get the file content file type and all those things and keep in mind that that this trigger returns actually the file content so basically whatever that is inside the file which is perfect at the moment i really don't want to get into the details but here is the thing there are no properties here let me just go to the expressions and get the trigger output here trigger output is an expression which basically gets the output of this trigger once it is fired and brings it here and compose shows us the entire thing that this guy returns in a json variable so i just click on ok and then i click on save let's go back to sharepoint and make some changes i go to the file that i have here for example test 01 i click on it sharepoint opens it the content i change something and it's automatically saved I just go back to the library and we go back to flow and see if it is fired actually. So let me go back to the parent. It is actually fired. And if I click on it inside compose, I should see whatever that this guy returns. And as you can see, it has some header, but mainly the body contains the content type and the content so basically the binary content of this file is inside this variable we're good with that so let's get back to our powerpoint slide when i use when the file is created or modified in a folder i can get the file content but what if i go to sharepoint and change the metadata instead of training for this one let me select this one edit all and instead of training let me call it business and i click save does it fire the flow let's get back and see i go back to flow run history again i click on this library refresh refresh we wait for five minutes and see if anything happens and yes finally when i refreshed it it actually fired and it gives me the same information which is fantastic so basically when i'm using the when the file is created or modified in a folder regardless if i change the file content or the file metadata or the other properties it still fires although it only gives me the file content not the property if you really want to get the properties you need to get item or get file from this library and work with it from that moment onwards. So we learned about when the file is created or modified in a folder. The other one is when the file is created or modified properties only. Now let's try this trigger and see what we get out of it. So again, I go to edit view. I delete this one. Okay. Now again, I look for SharePoint, SharePoint, and I look for modified. Let me close this. Okay. When a file is created or modified properties only, so we pick up this one. Again, I look up the URL. The library name is going to be lib01. And the folder is optional. If I don't pick the folder, it looks the entire library. But if I pick the folder, it only looks inside that folder. So again, I go to lib01, which is the root folder. I can pick folder, but at the moment there is no folder inside it. So we're good with what we got. Again, I come here 
inside compose, I go to expression, and again, I would say trigger outputs, and I click OK. And I click Save. Apart from that, when I click here, you will see this one now has a lot more. It has category, that, th that is the field that I added myself, and lots of other built-in fields. So basically, when you are using the, when the file is created or modified, properties only, it returns us all the file properties in this list. And of course, if I've added any properties myself, which is the category here. So if I click Save and test it this time, I go to this SharePoint and I change something, which is business. I change it to, for example, finance. I click Save. And let's see if the trigger is fired. So I go back to, and let's see the last call. So when the last call is happening, if I click on this, if I go to Compose, this time you will see a much longer list. So it has headers. Okay. And if I scroll down under body, it's not just content and content type. You have the ID, you have item internal ID, you have modified editor, blah, blah, blah. It also has editor claims, category, created, author, and a lot more information. So basically everything that you need from the file other than the content. This trigger does not give you the content, but it gives you the file name and extension that you can actually use it to get the file using the other actions if that's what you need to work with. Great. So this one also fires if you change the file content or the file property, although it only returns you the property. So you gotta make up your mind. If you want to work with the file content, you gotta use, when the file is created or modified in a folder, this one gives you the file content, while this one gives you the properties. Now, let's do the last one, which is when an item is created or modified. This one is a little bit tricky, but I love to use this one. And here is why I like it. I take it to Flow Designer again. I go on Edit, and let's delete this item and add my favorite one, SharePoint. I click on SharePoint, and again, I look for modified. And this time I'm looking for when an item is created or modified. This trigger specifically targeting lists. So when I pick the site, and if I go to the list name, you do not see this library lib 01. You don't see it. It's not there. Ah, great. But what if I say enter custom value and manually type lib01? And I save it. Of course, compose is empty. So I click on expression and I click on trigger output. I click OK, save, and before I go to SharePoint, I want to show you something. When I click here, it shows me category, checkout. So basically, although it does not look it up, as soon as you enter the right list name, it reads all the properties. It has a file name with extension, full path, identifier, is folder, blah, 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 and all those properties. Basically, it has everything. Everything except for the content. Apparently, let's save it and see if it works. So I go back to the library again. Let me fire this trigger by changing this marketing to... and... I change the marketing to business. I click on save. And let's go back to flow. 
Oh, again, for God's sake, SP library. Let's refresh it a few times and see if we get it. Yep, and we got it. So uh, this is the last execution. If I expand it and if I click on Compose, it will give me headers, body, contains the data tag, ID, modified, editor, and all the other fields. Let me scroll down. Category, which is the field that I just updated, created author, and it goes on and on. Everything except for content, which is fantastic. If you want to get anything other than file content, you can use this one. If you need the file content after this trigger is fired, you got to use the ID and look it up using another action. And I think you can take it from there and work with the return values of these triggers. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. I always appreciate your comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also check my course catalog on Udemy. The link is in the video description.